Scientists are tracking changes to the giant supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park, but they say there's no need to worry right now. The western part of the Yellowstone caldera is shrinking, said Ninfa Bennington, a volcanologist geophysicist at the U.S. Geological Survey and lead author of a paper in Wednesday's issue of the journal Nature. The caldera is a giant volcanic crater left over from Yellowstone's last major eruption 640,000 years ago. It measures about 48 kilometers by 72 kilometers. These findings suggest that future volcanic activity in Yellowstone will be concentrated in the northeastern part of the park, and an eruption is unlikely in the near future. This volcanic system is not capable of producing such an eruption, Bennington said. For now, Yellowstone's mud pots will continue to boil, hot springs will continue to steam, geysers will continue to erupt, the earth will continue to shake, and fumaroles will continue to erupt. The vast underground magma pool beneath this historic park remains extremely hot, ranging between 1,247 degrees and 2,512 degrees, Bennington said. Yellowstone is one of the largest volcanic systems on the planet, where plumes of Earth's molten core rise through the crust of solid rock, heating and melting it to form a magma reservoir 4.5 to 50 kilometers below the surface. In the past, this reservoir was often depicted as a single lava lake beneath the volcano, but newer mapping and imaging techniques have made it possible to see the complex reservoir system where the magma collects. Imaging techniques that have produced more accurate maps of the vast magma reservoir beneath the park show a large, deep magma pool leading to a shallower magma pool closer to the surface in the northeast, which connects to the park's renowned hydrothermal system. To determine the likelihood of a volcanic eruption, volcanologists calculate something called the melt fraction. This fraction is the ratio of the amount of magma, which they call melt, to the total volume of the crust. Think of the Earth as a volcano, Bennington said. However, instead of air-filling cavities and fissures, the Earth is molten rock. In active volcanic areas, the proportion of magma is greater than that of Earth. The higher the proportion of magma, the greater the likelihood of an eruption in that area. The mapping was done using magnetotellurics, which measures the electrical conductivity of what lies beneath the Earth's surface. Molten rock, electrically called magma, is highly conductive, allowing for accurate mapping of magma storage areas. The tests were conducted over several months by scientists from the USGS, Oregon State University, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. What they showed was that while there are several large magma reservoirs beneath Yellowstone, they are separate from each other. It would be difficult to pinpoint a single eruption because they are not connected, Bennington said. It remains possible that the northeastern part of the National Park could erupt in a catastrophic eruption similar to the one that occurred at Yellowstone 2.1 million years ago. In that event, volcanic ash reached the Pacific Ocean, Canada, and Mexico. These events tend to recur every 600,000 to 800,000 years, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The last eruption occurred 640,000 years ago. This eruption is known as a super eruption because it released approximately 250 million cubic meters of material, 1,000 times more massive than the 1,980 eruption of Mount Street Helens in Washington State. At this point, the chambers in the sponge are not yet full of magma to support an eruption. For that to happen, the system needs more magma to fill more of the chambers in the crustal sponge. Once the system reaches a fraction of the chambers filled with magma, an eruption can occur. 